Hello and welcome to the podcast on tuberculosis. This is Sukant and Ravi here. Uh, in this podcast, we'll be discussing about uh, the deadly disease of tuberculosis in very layman terms. So the first half of this series is not going to be technical. So a scientific friend should uh, consider a apology in advance for not being very, very detailed, very thorough. This the idea is to make public aware on how what is tuberculosis, how it can be fought, how this thing which has been going on for millennia, how do we plan to control it? So on this line, the first question I have for Ravi is that WHO has announced a mission of 2030 and uh, Government of India, our Prime Minister has announced a mission of 2025. Absolutely. When tuberculosis could not be controlled for, some, for, so many, for, for millennia, how do we expect to beat it in the next 15-20 years? That's See, Sukant, uh, right off, let me tell you, tuberculosis is a deadly disease, right? And primarily, for the sake of our viewers, if uh, in, a, in a country like uh, ours, if four or five people are sitting together, statistically, two to three of us would harbor the TB bacterium in our bodies. Actually, it's a very clever bug. It hides into structures called these macrophages. Mm-hmm. And it can uh, be there for uh, many years. Oh, so is that the latent TB? Yeah. Okay. So as the term goes, it hides. It's a, it's in the latent form. Mm-hmm. And you're perfectly fine. You're roaming around. Mm-hmm. But you're a carrier and uh, it's not affecting you. But come a time in your life when your immune system goes down, mm-hmm. pop will come this bug and it will lead to a full-blown infection. Right. So uh, its ability to... Uh, evade the immune uh, system of the human host is an important thing for uh, thing for its success. Now, uh, coming to your question again, uh, this is a very ambitious target. I would say uh, even set by the World Health Organization. But in its uh, uh, 2017 report, they clearly laid down that they want to eliminate TB by 2030. Yeah. Right. And this is a considered uh, opinion by various experts. The World Health Organization guys are not uh, fools, right? Yeah. So they would have, they, of course, they may be also very optimistic. And uh, if you just see, uh, in terms of uh, the number of people who have been affected by TB, let's say, uh, according to the data of 2015, there were 4.75 uh, million cases of TB. And more than 8 lakh people died due to TB, TB plus HIV and all included. See, there's this co-infection with TB and HIV again is a big problem. Yeah. Because as you know, HIV down, uh, uh, decreases the immune, uh, system. immune system and this being opportunis- opportunistic simply comes up. And the estimated incidence of uh, drug resistance, mm-hmm. which is defined as uh, if any of the frontline drugs don't act, yeah. then it's a drug resistance chain. Right. So, and, and it's a, more than about uh, 2 lakhs. And mm-hmm. I think many of these figures are actually underreported mm-hmm. because of the stigma associated with uh, TB. Of course, we are now quoting only official figures. Yeah. But I would estimate it's certainly much higher than what is quoted. Right. And the good news mm-hmm. is that actually the number of new TB cases is declining. Yeah. But again, at a very marginal rate, it's now at the rate of about 1.5%. So suppose we have to eliminate TB by 2030, we are already in 2018 now, Mm -hmm. we would have to go at around more than 10 to 12 percent. Yeah. Right. This uh, decrease in the new TB cases has to go at jog around at 10 to 12 percent. And when we actually say uh, that we want to eliminate TB by 2025, Mm -hmm. now this has to rise up very sharply to about 20 to 25 percent. Yes. The rate of decrease in new TB cases. Mm-hmm. It's only about six years away. Yeah. And we're already halfway through the 2018. Yeah. Right. So let me not be a pessimist. Let me yeah. be an optimist mm-hmm. and say that let us make 2025 a very significant year in our fight against t- t- TB. Yeah. We have been fighting it for millennia. Yeah. And now uh, let's use this year as a as a very significant year to say that let's get all the forces which are uh, coming together to fight TB together. These uh, include the NGOs, mm-hmm. 
which have a big stake because what outreach government agencies cannot do ngos play a big role in uh, sensitizing people then we also need a huge uh, sensitizing role for doctors right many doctors now due to for various reasons uh, they miss diagnose tb and it is a very shocking figure that more than 50 55% of tb cases are actually misdiagnosed so you are given antibiotics for some uh, which are not tb antibiotics at all and in of course they would they many of them might act in some ways and this increases uh, tb resistance and misdiagnosis also means thousands of people die yeah because they don't get the right treatment in time it's too late before uh, anything happens uh, so uh, this is again a very important uh, thing that doctors need to be sensitized so it's not just at this level then the social stigma mm-hmm. a person who is uh, suffering from tb it's a mahamari yeah. in dehati terms right it's a kshay rog it's a it's called a kshay rog mm-hmm. it's a mahamari it's a, a huge disease mm-hmm. and uh, traditional uh, stigma uh, prevents many people from actually going mm-hmm. and getting the medicines they actually need their treatment that actually should mm-hmm. be given to them and then then there is also the common more common thing of how do we actually say that a person has drug resistant tb or uh, mm-hmm. regular just the usual routine tb especially with increasing prevalence mm-hmm. i think here a lot of technology is needed if you really have to achieve uh, 20 25% of reduction in the number of uh, tb new tb cases and even after getting access to treatment mm-hmm. poor patient compliance is a huge problem mm-hmm. why because many of these drugs have bad side effects okay. you feel nauseous mm-hmm. you may feel like vomiting you feel weak mm-hmm. not only because of the disease yeah, it's, the it's just the side effects and the other the other thing is that within a month mm-hmm. uh, when the active infection uh, symptoms subside Uh, many patients think that the doctors are necessarily overdosing them because yeah. the treatment is very long it's 6 to 9 months depending on the kind yeah. of uh, treatment our doctors therapy is the uh, standard therapy in india uh, we have a very robust thing and it's working very well mm-hmm. we have a good system in place but then compliance is a huge problem i can give you an often example of my own maid servant mm-hmm. uh, again this is this goes below the radar right Mm-hmm. so i had to really push her to go to a primary health center get her registered and she underwent treatment mm-hmm. and while she was telling that she is going go, uh, undergoing treatment i knew that she is getting her medicines on time mm-hmm. but she was not uh, actually it turns out in retrospect that mm-hmm. she was not uh, actually eating them uh, according to the dosage she should have mm-hmm. and lo and behold 3 months later it relapsed again and this time she was on a drug resistant regimen Yeah. so it is not so it's like once you get to a center often the best advice is given to you mm-hmm. but you need to follow it up so now you come i come back to my point about using technology yeah so if you really are, have to achieve that 2025 uh, target and make it a significant year in a fight against tb we really have to use techniques like technology like artificial intelligence you may ask why Mm-hmm. right now you are the expert come on no, okay. i say see the smile on your face and mm-hmm. you are already bursting with ideas mm-hmm. right uh, like we discussed earlier mm-hmm. uh, artificial intelligence can play a big role in ensuring patient compliance and mm-hmm. also sensitizing them to the need to have yeah. i'm sure every everyone has a smartphone now the penetration yeah. of a smartphone even yeah. in uh, villages is very high yeah it's very high i think appropriate apps friendly apps it mm-hmm. would also keep it uh, low key it keeps the stigma away it has yeah. the potential to keep the stigma away because you get the advice in a secure environment yeah and i think local languages become very important absolutely so you can, you may go, be able to give advice in the local language yeah it should not be in english only and if, absolutely otherwise absolutely. we'll not be able to reach masses absolutely even this podcast which we are doing Yeah. Uh, we will be putting it out in the uh, yeah, in, in the in, later on yeah. in, in the uh, and other languages also absolutely also. absolutely hindi tamil marathi yeah 
I think some of the languages I think you also can get into your yeah. native Punjabi yeah. background and yeah. stuff like that. Only we'll have it covered yeah. with some more translators. But then uh, it's very important to get this information to the ground mm-hmm. in the language and sensitize people. So uh, uh, it's not only the government agencies. Mm-hmm. And actually, there are good policies. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. There are very good policies. A lot of money is there. We need to enhance support for mm-hmm. uh, TB anyway. And uh, for because the bug is very intelligent, new drugs are hard to come by. Mm. Now, after 40 years and 40 odd years, we have come to a new drug uh, called bedaquiline, which yeah. is now got helping in drug resistant TB. Of course, with a lot of side effects, but more on this later. Yeah. I think this is a good introduction. To yeah. So, Ravi, thanks a lot for very informative podcast. I mean, uh, essentially, if I have to summarize, it will not just be about drug discovery, it will be about awareness, it will be taking care of supply chain, it will be having the right government programs, it will be about patient compliance. So, sure. uh, we'll see you in the next episode. We hope you listen to our uh, podcast on beating tuberculosis next time. Yeah, welcome and thanks for listening. Bye.